hydrostatic forces on inclined surface in this video we will uh, see the derivation how the fo hydrostatic forces will on act on inclined plane consider here a free surface level and this there is a tank here and the liquid is uh, there having density equals to rho and we assume the density remains constant over the given depth Consider here one inclined plane. The true shape of this plane is here. If you rotate this plane by 90 degree, you will get a true shape. This one is called as edge view. And this edge view, if extended, we will meet the free surface level at an angle equal to theta. This represents the true shape. It may be a rectangle, triangle, cir circle, anything. So theta is the angle made by the edge view with the plane of a free surface. So this one is the edge view. And makes an angle of theta with the free surface. Let's consider here an elemental area dA and the projection of this one is shown like this. That is equal to area dA. Let H is the depth of immersion of this free surface. So let's say that this area dA is a depth of H meters from the free surface level. Now the pressure is a function of the height only. So the uh, because the density is constant, so pressure acting on this area is equals to rho gh and is perpendicular to this plane. So on this area, because of pressure multiplied by this area, we have a hydrostatic force acting which is perpendicular to this plane. And in this figure, it is perpendicular to the plane of paper. And this hydrostatic force on elemental area is given by df as a product of pressure multiplied by area but the pressure equals to rho gh so the elemental hydrostatic force will be equals to rho gh multiplied by dA the total hydrostatic force is the sum of all these forces now this force has a, this uh, side has a less depth and the depth is going increasing so this force is variable as you go towards the depth it's the smallest value at this point and the largest value at this point and this uh, force will go on increasing linearly from top to bottom the total hydrostatic force is the sum of all such forces which can be calculated using the integral df and since the df is equal to rho g h multiplied by dA so we have to compute this integral rho g h multiplied by dA here the density is constant and g is constant that is taken outside so it becomes integral rho now recall the definition of centroid the centroid is for any plane figure or the center of gravity for any plane, uh, any figure is x bar equals to integral of x dA divided by total area dA. Similarly, we can write down the h bar is equals to integral h dA divided by dA. So this row in g is com taken outside, so it becomes integral of h dA, and integral of h dA can be replaced with the value of h bar multiplied by dA, that is equal to area A, where h bar is the depth of center of gravity below free surface so suppose we have a this figure and this is the center of gravity the center of gravity has to be projected on edge view and the depth of this below free surface is called as edge bar so total hydrostatic force is given by the product of density multiplied by g multiplied by edge bar multiplied by dA remember this equation is apl only applicable if the density is, is constant there is a continuous variation of the force from this point to this point and the total hydrostatic force is given by rho multiplied by g multiplied by h bar multiplied by dA. So this resultant force will pass through a certain point. That point we called as center of pressure. So the center of pressure may be defined like this. It is a point through which the total or the resultant hydrostatic force F passes. And this point Cp we assume is at a lower point than the Cg value. This axis perpendicular to the edge view I will consider it as x axis and this axis I have taken as y axis. So this distance will be parallel to y axis will be measured as y. So this common point this uh, elemental area dA is at a distance of y. The center of gravity at distance of y bar and the center of pressure will be at distance of ycp. The this area dA which is a projection here has a y coordinate equal to y bar and this depth is equal to h whereas this point cp at distance of ycp from this point and is scp from this point scp from free surface level so the same projection i have shown here also this is the area da this distance equals to y and this distance equal to h and therefore we can write sin theta as opposite side divided by hypotenuse that is h by y 
the center of gravity is a distance of y bar the center of gravity a distance of y bar from the this point which is in the free surface level and the corresponding distance is h bar again this is the right angle triangle so we can define sin theta equals to h bar divided by y bar finally i have located the center of pressure and this distance uh, is equals to ycp so this distance equals to ycp and the corresponding depth is equals to scp so again we have this triangle is a right angle triangle and therefore uh, sin theta is again equals to scp by divided by ycp in the first part in the first part we have proved that the force is equals to rho g h bar multiplied by area if you see the middle term then h bar can be replaced as a product of y bar multiplied by sin theta so the hydrostatic force that is this force f bar which is passing through c is the resultant hydrostatic force or the total hydrostatic force is a product of density multiplied by acceleration due to gravity multiplied by y bar multiplied by sin theta the angle made by h view with the free surface multiplied by area now our objective is to locate the point cp that is we are interested to find out the value of scp or we are interested to find out value of ycp to find out this value what we use is the principle of moments and according to the principle of moments the resultant moment about any point must equals to the sum of individual moment about that point here reference i have taken the x axis so i will compute the moment of all these forces that is this force this force this force this force which are perpendicular to this plane multiplied by this distance about x axis and then that total value is equated with the force passing through this point which is again a perpendicular force to this plane and having value equal to f bar and the distance of this force is equals to ycp the resultant moment is due to the resultant force that equals to f and now we have the value of f equal to rho into g into y bar into sin theta multiplied by a ycp as it is and this df is equals to rho into g into h into da because this df is equals to pressure multiplied by area and pressure equals to rho gh multiplied by da multiplied by y so here we get again the rho g into y bar this sin theta i have written here and a first then ycp and out of this uh, some integral sign rho g can be taken common integral of sin theta even sin theta is independent because that is a constant value so rho g and sin theta rho g and sin theta will get cancel and therefore we left with the equation of ycp is equals to integral of y into this y that is the y square multiplied by da and on this side it is area multiplied by y bar so ycp is equal to 1 divided by area multiplied by y bar into integral of y square da this can be solved further now we know that the moment of inertia about the x axis is given by ix equals to integral y square da so we have moment of inertia about the x axis equals to ix into y square da and by parallel axis theorem what we get is uh, ix equals to ixo that is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis plus area multiplied by y bar square so we'll substitute this value here instead of ix so what we get is ycp is equals to 1 upon a y bar as it is and ix is replaced by parallel axis theorem ixo plus a times y bar square we remember y bar is the distance of centroid from the x axis so ycp will be equals to this is a uh, a and this a is cancel one of the y bar and y bar one of the y bar is cancel so we left with i uh, simply y bar from this side and ixo is get divided by a y bar using the sin theta we can further solve this equation because we know that the sin theta is equals to h by y is same as h bar divided by y bar and is same as scp upon ycp so we can replace this ycp with this we can replace this y bar using this equations and if we substitute we get instead of ycp we'll get a uh, ycp we'll get scp divided by sin theta instead of y bar we'll get y bar will shift here so this is h bar divided by sin theta so we'll get the ycp equals to scp by sin theta y bar equals to h bar by sin theta and ixo equal to area and y bar is again same as h bar sin theta 
so what we get is uh, this sin theta this sin theta will be get cancel or this sin theta will shift in numerator and is cross multiplied so this sin theta this sin theta will shift to the right side or what we can do is that we can multiply this whole equation by sin theta in that case we get scp is equals to h bar plus ixo multiplied by sin square theta upon a h bar now in this equation sin square theta so square of any term is always positive area is always positive depth of immersion is positive moment of inertia is a basically square of the distance multiplied by area so this one is also positive so this whole number is always positive it means that scp is equals to h bar plus certain positive quantity so what we conclude is that scp is always greater than h bar and therefore we can say that the center of pressure always lies below the center of gravity so here is the statement the center of pressure cp always lies below the center of gravity if theta is not equal to 90 what happen if theta equal to 90 if theta is equal to 90 then sine of this will be equals to 0 so this whole term will vanish and only for horizontal plate theta will be equals to 90 uh, sorry theta equal to this is wrong this one is for theta equals to 0 actually so for this one is theta equal to 0 if theta equal to 0 sine 0 will be 0 and this is true for all cases other than 0 you make a correction here this is not theta equal to 90 this is theta equals to 0 now if we focus the second term that is this term here h bar is in the denominator and therefore what we conclude is that as the depth of cg that is h bar increases that is this term increases the second term in the equation number one that is this term will going to vanish and therefore scp is approximately equals to h bar that is the center of pressure and the center of gravity center of gravity through which whole weight is acting center of pressure through which hydrostatic force is acting they are come close to get, come close to each other or sometimes they are even equal also there are certain important points while using the equation of scp first very th the important thing is that the angle theta is made by the edge view of the plane and not by the true shape second thing is that the depth h bar is always measured with respect to free surface level and not with respect to the figure so remember these two points always and then you can solve the problem using the equation of scp and using the equation of force so i consider two figures just to give the idea about the angle made by the plane view uh, angle made by the plane and angle made by the edge view and the true shape second is the depth h i consider here one rectangle so this is a true shape where you can clearly visualize the h and b the height and width this is center of gravity second plate i have taken slightly below the free surface at a certain distance equals to h now edge view of this one so if you turn this plate by 90 degree you will get edge view and this edge view always makes an angle of 90 degree so theta equals to 90 for any rectangle the cg will be equals to h by 2 For any rectangle, the centroid is h by 2, so h bar is equals to h by 2. So for this figure, simply h bar is equals to h by 2. So in second figure, my depth of the top edge is the h1, and here the in the first figure, the top edge in the free surface level. And this is the true shape because you can clearly see the two dimension h and b. And is the if I extend, if I rotate this plane by 90 degree, I will get the edge view. And if I extend this line. I will get a 90 degree again so every time the plane is making an angle of 90 degree but angle is always made by the edge view so this one theta is equals to 90 and if you locate the value of center of gravity then you have to project this center of gravity from true shape to the edge view and now you have to find out the value distance of this cg so this distance will be equals to h by 2 whereas this distance if you compute it will be called as h bar so that is what h bar is always measured with reference to free surface and is never measured with reference to the geometry of your given body so this h bar will be equals to h1 plus h by 2 as far as the rectangle is concerned as far as rectangle is considered ixo the moment of inertia about the center of axis is always bh cube by 12 for triangle ixo is given by bh cube by 36 and for circle ixo is given by pi d to the power 4 divided by 64 and one more the last important thing is that whenever we deep a plane figure 
it, then no volume is displaced because what we mean a plane figure it has x and y dimension it does not have any z dimension so thickness is zero so volume is not defined for plane dimension so there is no volume displaced and since there is no volume displaced the plane figure does not experience any type of buoyant force.